next week will mark uh, the 100th anniversary of the Balfour Declaration. And if you were Foreign Secretary now, would you invite an Israeli Prime Minister to Britain to celebrate the Balfour Declaration? I don't think we celebrate the Balfour Declaration, but I think we have to mark it because I think that it was a turning point in the history of that area. Um, and I think that the, probably the most important way of marking it actually would be to recognize Palestine. I think that the British government have said that they will do, it's just a question of when will the time be right. And it seems to me that this is the time. This is the time. I remember when I, um, Abbas came to Britain, it was a few years ago, and, uh, and I was at a meeting with him and I said, what would be the one thing that you'd want from us, you know, to, to, to help and to support? To, and he said, recognize, we want recognition. And, I've, and I remembered that, and I've always, you know, and I'm really pleased that it's our policy that we should, we should recognize. I mean, it's two states. We need to have two states. We need to have two viable states. We need to have two viable, secure, safe states. We mustn't forget that in the end, that's the only solution. And that's what we should be doing, and anything that we're doing should be in furtherance of that. We should measure everything we do against that. And actually, as somebody who's been a member of Friends of Israel since I joined the, joined the Parliamentary Labour Party, I'm a member of Friends of Israel, I'm a member of Friends of Palestine, it seemed to me to be entirely consistent with being a British politician in favour of a two-state solution, that you need to be friends with both sides. But friends need to speak the truth. And, and essentially, I feel sometimes that the Israeli government has lost its way because you know what what are they now doing are they heading for a one state it seems on the face of it that they may be and in that way they're letting down the israeli people because you can't have a democratic jewish one state in that area yeah, so they'll have to have a choice and, and over the 20 30 years that i've been i've been going to the area the one thing one thing that strikes me is is obviously the separation of the peoples, the, the building of settlements, but now it's so difficult to get across the border. Um, I remember in 1982 driving all over the West Bank, backwards and forwards, you know, there being no problems at all. And then the last time I went, I think it was about five or six years ago, and it was almost impossible to get, to Jeru to get from Jerusalem to Bethlehem, mm. you know, because of the, now the security situation. And so, it isn't just the settlements, it's also the road closures, it's the, it's the security points, it's the flying posts and so on, which just makes a Palestinian state unviable. And how rigorous would you be about incidents like uh, Shai Massot um, and his attempts to set up a, a youth wing uh, of uh, Labour Friends of Israel? Uh, at the time when this was revealed, you said that um, uh, th this amounted to uh, a national security issue, but nothing was done. Uh, I don't think there's been a, 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 I mean, Massot himself has returned to Israel, but there's no inquiry to date. Uh, would you call for one now? So where we have got to is that the broadcast itself, I think, was questioned and, uh, and reported and there was a complaint taken out against it. And I think that we've just had the results of that and I think that Ofcom have said that the that the broadcast stands. Yeah. So I know that the Labour Party is now looking at it and looking at what our appropriate response is, and I can't really say any more than that at the moment. I mean, oh, really? but, there, but, but, the, but there will the, there is a continuing um, Labour Party action. There, there is a. I can't. I mean, we've noted the fact that Ofcom upheld didn't uphold the complaint, right. and and com from conversations that I've had, you know, this is not being let to rest now. So there will be. You know, we haven't decided what we're going to do next, but it's not something which is just going to be let drop. Very clear collaboration, isn't there, between the Israeli embassy and the Labour Friends of Israel, which you saw? Yeah, I mean, it's difficult because there's quite a lot of Labour Friends of this and Labour Friends of that that where you, I mean, they do work quite closely with, mm. uh, with embassies, and that's the truth, you know, and that is the truth. Um, I don't want to name any others, I don't want to get anybody else into trouble, but, but I mean the reality is is that these groups do work closely together. So I think that's fine, I don't have a problem necessarily with that, um, but I think that the attempt to undermine government ministers was a different issue and, uh, and is serious. Although, uh, interesting, so you were relaxed about the very clear evidence of Labour Friends of Israel 
of have pursuing a, a pretty clear agenda at Labour conference in a what looked to be a very non-public way. A million pounds was offered at one stage by for trips. For, was it, yeah, and that was. It's for trips, isn't it? It's for yeah. trips, and you know, and there are lots of parliamentarians go to go to both Israel and Palestine, and paid for by a number of different groups. Um, so, you know, I mean, my our policy in the in the Foreign Office team is that we um, we pay for them ourselves. We don't.